Many of my clients find themselves in a situationship with their ex. You know, are you still together, just hooking up? Do you have a real future together? Now, it shouldn't be surprising that so many people end up in this kind of, you know, ambiguous no man's land with their ex. Because in fact, most couples who break up end up in some sort of situation like this. One study found that 53% of people still sleep with their ex after a breakup. But even if you're not sleeping together, if you're still seeing your ex regularly after the breakup, you know, and even if you're just chatting in some cases, then you're probably in a situationship with your ex. Now don't worry, because I'm going to tell you what this means, how to tell what your ex wants, and what you should do about it. Whether you want them back, want to move on, or even if you don't know right now. And if you do want a second chance with your ex, you know, in other words, you want more than just this current, you know, situationship, well watch to the end, because later in the video I'll share six steps to help you break free and convince your ex to recommit to a real relationship. But first off, let's talk about what a situationship is, so we know what's really happening here. So basically, a situationship is what we call it anytime you're seeing somebody and you're not exactly sure what the rules are, what the relationship really is, and what it means. So maybe things are, you know, so fresh that you haven't had a chance to talk about it. Maybe one or both of you is just flat out avoiding the topic because you don't want to screw it up. Or maybe you want more and they're just saying what you want to hear to keep you around. Whatever the case, situationships are a fun time right up until they're not. In fact, you know, by the time you start to use the word, you're typically over all that ambiguity and wanting to actually define this thing one way or another. The problem with situationships is that, you know, since they're undefined, both people tend to have different understandings of what they really mean. So maybe you think it's more serious and your ex is actually dating three other people. Maybe they think you're, you're the love of their life and you're just looking for something casual while you, you know, look for somebody you can actually see a future with. So really, they represent an issue with communication that tends to, to grow and create even bigger problems sooner rather than later. Now some of you might be asking yourself, am I in a situationship or is this a real relationship? And truthfully, if you have to ask that question, it's not a real relationship, at least not yet. Even if you both have the best intentions and want the same thing, you know, until you've defined things, you can't know for sure and so you can't feel secure with this person. And at the other end of things, you know, if you've hooked up with your ex once since the breakup and never really seen them or talked to them, then I'd say you're actually probably not in a situationship. Situationships are, are rarely consistent, but they do have to be ongoing so, you know, one hookup doesn't really qualify. But if you, if you have been spending time together with your ex, sleeping with them, being romantic, or even just hanging out, and you don't really know what the rules are, then you're in a situationship. So here are some other indicators. One is, you know, you're afraid to discuss the situation with your ex because you don't know how they'll react. You're confused about your feelings and their feelings. Maybe they're very hot and cold and inconsistent. You never make plans too far ahead or really talk about the future. And you don't know if they're seeing other people or not. So then the question becomes, what, if anything, should you actually do about it? And I'll, I'll actually take a different approach than most people uh, with this one and say that you don't necessarily have to do anything about it. Now, yes, there are situations where being in a situationship with your ex is just fine. You know, it's okay to just enjoy each other's company and not really put a label on it, depending on the situation and what you actually want out of it. You know, life can be, can be lonely, so you really shouldn't feel any shame about spending time with somebody who you really enjoy spending time with. And though it, you know, it is good to have standards, we also have to, you know, take our happiness where we can, where we can get it, and there's no use beating yourself up for having a little fun with your ex. But it is important to enter into this with your eyes open, you know, knowing the, the potential pitfalls of a situationship with your ex, especially if your goal is to get back into a real committed romantic relationship again. So here are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself before you can proceed. Now, number one, can I accept the ambiguity? Now really, this is the hard part of any situationship. You, you don't know how this person feels about you. You don't know what they want or what they need. Are you going to be able to, to accept not knowing? Or is that just going to drive you crazy? I'm guessing that for many of you watching, the answer is probably no. You know, you can't accept this kind of ambiguity long term. But, you know, ask yourself nonetheless. And secondly, ask, you know, am I okay with the relationship not being the same as it was before? Because many people get into a situation like this with their ex, you know, hoping that it's going to be the same relationship that they had before the breakup, only to really be disappointed in and find out that things have changed. So you need to ask yourself if you're okay with things being different, being less intense and being more distant. Because really, you can't expect the same kind of intimacy with your ex in this kind of new situationship scenario. Thirdly, how would I feel if they found somebody new and ended it? Now, of course, you know, this is the doom scenario for many people in situationships. Just the feeling of being thrown away when the other person finds someone better. And if that's how you'd feel, then maybe a situationship is not for you. But on the flip side, you know, if you can look at this as a temporary arrangement for both of you, and you could accept that the breakup was, was an issue of incompatibility, not your own shortcomings, 
then you're in good shape. So if they find somebody new and decide to stop seeing you, you know, it's not because they like this person better, it's that there's you know, compatibility there that you two don't have and that's okay. Still, you know, it's one thing to understand this on paper, but it can be really hard to internalize this. And if you know that it's gonna crush you to see them with somebody new, then this isn't gonna work for you. It's time to escape. So let's talk a little bit about how to do that. So if you do decide that it's not gonna work, then the real question becomes, you know, what are your options? And you really only have three options here. First, you could cut things off and completely and, and just move on. You could stay in this situation and you know, be miserable. Or you could take steps to change the relationship into something that you can actually feel better about. And for the purposes of this video, we're talking about the third option. Going from a, from a situation chip to a proper relationship. Now, first off, you, know, you need to be aware that you may not be able to get what you want with your ex. You know, a situation ship might be all they're willing to offer despite your best efforts. Now, most of the time, that's probably not gonna be the case and you probably do still have a chance, but keep in mind that there's always a chance your ex won't accept anything more than the current status quo. So deciding to try and change the relationship and make it more committed and defined brings with it the risk that you know, it won't work out. And of course, this is a scary possibility, but for most of you, I'm guessing you're not happy with being in a situation ship where you wouldn't be here watching this video. So let's assume you, know, you wanna to try to create a real exclusive romantic relationship that's leading to a life together. Now, how do you think your ex feels about that? You've probably been looking at them with, with rose-colored glasses since you decided you wanted them back, right? You know, you've been ignoring the red flags and focusing on every little shred of hope that they've given you, or overanalyzing every message they send you and every conversation you've had. So really, now is the time to stop lying to yourself. Take a step back and try to look at the big picture. You know, all the signs your ex has been sending you since the breakup. And really evaluate where their head is at right now, as well as what it appears that they want out of the relationship. Maybe the best way to understand your ex's feelings is by going to breakupbrad.com slash quiz. It's a simple quiz, it only takes five minutes, and it'll give you the answer to the question, do I still have a chance with my ex? Obviously, this is vital information to have in your position, so I do recommend that you take the five minutes to fill it out. Again, it's free and it's at breakupbrad.com slash quiz. All right, from here, it's time to start pushing things into relationship territory. So step one is to pull back. Part of the reason this situation has unfolded the way it has is because you've made yourself too available to your ex. You've shown them that you're willing to be their situationship rather than their partner. And the only way you can change this is to change it. And since you can't convince your ex to take you seriously with facts and logic, your only real option is to change your behavior. Now, you don't wanna completely ghost your ex or anything like that. You just wanna create some distance from them. You know, the main thing here is that you don't wanna to be too available or to be you know, available whenever they want. They can't expect you to just come running and drop your plans anytime they wanna see you. Now, you're not doing this out of you know, spite or resentment. You're doing it to show them that you have other priorities in your life outside of them because you can't make them a priority if they won't make you one. Essentially, you're managing their access to you. So don't let everything happen on their terms or you'll never get the relationship you want. And step two is to be clear with what you want. So one of the big issues here is lack of clarity. Really, that's what makes a situationship a situationship in the first place. So if you let your ex know that you're not interested in the, the no strings attached, friends with benefits, on and off again thing that you've been doing, you remove this ambiguity from the situation and you get back on the path to a proper relationship. Now in certain situations, this does require you to have a conversation with your ex, you know, laying out exactly what you want and what you don't want. But unless things have really progressed a long way, I would strongly advise you not to take this step. Instead, you wanna show them rather than telling them. So, being less available is one step we've already talked about. And you also can't let them treat you like a friend or a confidant or really anything other than a potential partner. And show them that you're going to move on from them if they don't treat you the way that you deserve with number three, which is to date around. If you and your ex, you know, if you're not in a proper relationship, they really have no reason to expect you to act like you are. So with that in mind, you, know, you wanna get out there and date new people. This is gonna show your ex that you're gonna move on if they don't start taking you seriously. It's also gonna make them worry about losing you and it's gonna increase your confidence because it'll show you that you do have other options. You know, oftentimes we get into scenarios like this because we've lost our confidence. We worry that we don't deserve a proper relationship so we'll accept our ex's crumbs. But when you see that you, know, you do have other options, you'll know that you can ask for what you want and actually get it. And if your ex isn't willing to offer it, you'll be able to move on with your head held high. Which brings us to step number four, don't sleep with them. Now, obviously, sex is a big driver of situationships. It helps to you know, paper over any underlying issues, and it really brings you together. 
but it's ultimately just creating a false sense of intimacy with this person. It's actually, it's holding you back from connecting more deeply, at least in this case. And as we've talked about, you want to, your ex to feel like they're, they're missing something because you aren't together anymore. But if you continue to sleep with them, spend time with them, love them, and you know, otherwise make them happy, what are they really missing? And this is why I advise you to remove sex from the equation. If they ask why, tell them that you're not looking for just casual sex or that you don't think it's a good idea right now while you're focused on moving on. Remember, you want something more. And step number five, build the connection. Now, like I said, you do need to take some distance from your ex, but you also shouldn't neglect the connection that you've been building. You know, whenever you, whenever you do see them or talk to them, don't make it a big discussion about the state of the relationship. You know, just keep it fun, light, and make them laugh as much as possible. Flirt and, and build sexual tension, but as we discussed, withhold actual physical intimacy, at least for now. You, know, you want them to see that you're, you're still there and you're still the amazing person they fell in love with. But you also need them to know that you're not going to stick around unless things change. And number six, focus on yourself. Uh, it's really easy to get extremely caught up on this relationship with your ex. You know, I've, I've seen people waste years of their lives this way. They let it consume them, you know, emotionally and physically. They get so obsessed with this toxic connection with their ex that they lose the will to actually fix things and, and try for a better future together. So the best way to, to combat this is to really change your focus. Make your own life your number one priority. You know, take a look in the mirror and decide what you want to change and then actually take action. You know, excel at work, put more time into your hobbies, travel, do whatever it takes to get out of this funk and back to feeling like your best self. Not only is this going to make your ex miss you more because you know, you'll have less time for them, but it's going to make them more attracted to you because someone with a sense of purpose is always more attractive than someone without one. And that just about does it for this video. Hopefully now you understand you know, this situation ship a little bit better than you did before and you can decide whether to stick with it, cut it off, or, or make a solid effort at trying to turn it into a real relationship. Whatever happens, I hope you find the happiness and the peace of mind that you're looking for. And if you still have questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to take my free quiz at breakupbrad.com quiz to find out where you stand with your ex and get some personalized advice on how to maximize your chances. That's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.